changed your name so many times, haven't you? Well, as, um, when the end of 77 came, and I'd also by then recruited me, me school pal Pete Petrol because he, he had a car. And I got some <laughs> London gigs. Uh, people were booked, trying to book us to, to play in London, although they weren't going to pay us. We had to argue over the uh, fee yeah. after we'd performed. And um, so we'd driven all the way down from Birmingham to London to, um, and, and, and we called Space 77. And uh, he was called Pete Plectrum because he, he played guitar. Yeah. I, I dedicated him to play guitar. Because I could do all the jumping and running around. And um, I thought Space 78, that's not going to be very good. And I didn't want to be called Space 77 still in the following year and then I saw the program about the oil rigs being moved across the earth's surface as the largest man-made objects and Tony Benn switching on the oil and I thought yeah it's his oil and that was a symmetrical cool. name yeah absolutely and I thought it's great design fun so I started designing Spears oil and then Pete was not was not persuaded him to change his name to uh, Pete Petrol which was just, <laughs> and uh, away we went Genius. so then we, we changed, that was our first name change is it and did you have all the band met, you know, obviously Sid Vicious and um, Johnny Rotten, etc., and Spiz, Spiz Energy, um, Pete Petrol, did you have other band, name, band members when, had different when, names? When uh, Metamorphosis came to, uh, well, basically, me and Pete fell out at the end of 78, and uh, I met with my girlfriend, a bass player and a keyboard player, and, a, and another guitarist, but he, he was sacked after the first rehearsal. <laughs> uh, because he uh, he didn't like what we were doing. <laughs> so uh, but well, he got he got a uh, shock. Yeah. And Mark Caulfield, Mark Caulfield. So he, he that's how he his name because he's he, Mike Oldfield, Mark Caulfield because he was like the musically most talented. So we called him Mark Ol Mark Caulfield. And then Jim because <laughs> he had started bleaching his hair. We called him Jim Solo. So they're all forms of energy, you know. Absolutely. Oh, so there was a marketing plan in place, and it's, uh, well, it's at the punk yeah, ethic as well. Everyone else had funny made-up names, you know. Oh, absolutely. Sid Vicious and Johnny Rotten. So we thought it was normal. Yeah, Joe Strummer, <laughs> brilliant. Of course, Harry changed his name because of Jones, Davy Jones of the Monkeys was uh, already famous. So it, it seems like a normal thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what what came after Spiz Oil then? Well, Spiz Energy. Came was next. Spizzle, 79, and then we re released a couple more r rough trade singles, and then um, then people were saying, well, you know, you must be changing your name next year, because New Decade, I thought, yeah, well, but we sort of agreed with people, that, yeah, we shouldn't be changing our name, and we've now got a stable lineup because uh, we had seven guitarists in 79. <laughs> in one year? And three drummers. Dear me, sounds like, Ch sounds like the Chelsea manager trail, doesn't so, it? So, yeah, it was... I mean, they've, they've never been really an original lineup, <laughs> so you cannot can't have a renovation of the original lineup. Well, all the guitarists worn out, were they? Well, the, one of them um, hid behind the PA. You kidding me? He just got stage fright. <laughs> uh, we, we took his first gig was to play at the Hunter Club, and he just hid. And you can't have someone hiding when you try to like rock out. Absolutely. Another one, uh, he, every time he thought he was getting a chord rock, he turned down. And of course, we'd rather you turned up. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Three eleven, yeah. He, he had to go after one gig. People only really got one gig chance if they didn't do it. Get it on the first gig. Absolutely. They didn't get a second chance. Yeah. So and and, uh, you, and so what, what, what was the name then that uh, that you picked? That was what well, you mean. They're, 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 they're person's names. No, no. Sorry. The name of the in in the new decade you were coming up with the new. Atletico Spidetti. Ah, Atletico Spidetti. Because we were quite, you know, slightly left of a bunch, and when we saw that Thatcher and Reagan were dictating to athletes, you know, the, how often, some, some athletes only get one shot at the Olympics, they're not around for Oh, this is Los Angeles. Atlantics. No, it's Moscow. Oh, Moscow, of course, yeah. So Moscow <sighs> was, uh, right. you can't go to Moscow because of Afghanistan invasion. Yeah. So uh, we thought, well, you know, if I was an athlete, I'd, st I'd still go. And, 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 and to their credit, a lot of athletes did uh, mm. did still turn up. Break the boycott, yeah. Hey. So, so that's where that came from. So that's why we called ourselves Athletic Spitz 80. And then I, um, I, I sort of remodeled the German Munich Olympic Games athlete runner logo because he looked a bit too thin, so I sort of ch chunked him up a bit <laughs> and gave him a shoulder. And... Uh, and that became our logo. But, but I still prefer the Speed Energy logo because I made up that from scratch myself. It's so you, it's from your, your art school, art college roots, that's how you've, you actually do all these designs yourself, don't you? Yeah, this letter set 
this font was um, on the side of a truck called Spi Spices. Oh yeah, I know that. Yeah, but Seen the, S, on the motorway. Uh, S I thought was a bit ugly, so I've, I rounded off, I rounded off the S, and I didn't like the dot with the I, so I made the I solid, mm -hmm. and I changed the N obviously to give it the energy sort of yeah, flash. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I think I've rounded off the G and the R as well to make them a bit smoother. So, you, so you've you've altered my, uh, you've altered an existing font to to spizize it. Yeah. To him, spizize eh? it pretty good. And um, and what do you what do you, what do you use to do all, all this artwork? Because I've seen some stuff on well, the, on your walls as well. You in really the um, in the um, up to uh, seventy nine, it was all photocopiers or um, of course, yeah, hand drawn. Yeah. Hand -drawn. yeah. Uh, the Captain Kirk sleeve is because uh, what the other thing I did when I was at art college, I, I wasn't lazy, but I just like the way that uh, certain machines could reduce quickly. You, you know how they don't look at black and white; all the shades have gone. Yeah, like, like Graham Parker and the Brimo look, and um, yeah, loads of, even the Clash first LP sleeve is gone. Absolutely, yeah, that Love picture it. it's all like strip down black and white and I love that effect so mm. when I got a picture of Kirk and there was this new machine at the, my local photocopier shop and it looked brilliant so I thought well, that's, that's the sleeve uh, and then and I coloured it Warhol style with the yellow big absolutely like, the lips his lips in and his <laughs> eyes to make it sort looks of warhol esque he looks like he's had collagen doesn't he well, some people think it's some people who don't know it's just, Captain Kirk, Shatner, they think it's the Joker, the, the, <laughs> the smoke, smudgy recent Joker lipstick thing, but obviously not. Brilliant. And and uh, you use a Mac today, don't you? Yeah, uh, well, uh, when I was, I uh, got uh, the, uh, some, the, the first the Cherry Red reissue on CD, uh, I got a little slice of the, the, the pie, and I, I didn't know what sort of computer to get, and I still hadn't got one yet, and this is 96, and then... Um, all my music friends, uh, like Martin Ware and uh, other and graphic designers, were all were all Mac. Right. Uh, so um, it's a get a Mac. So I got a Mac. And just, I, I I did actually win a PC once, but I didn't like it. But I did uh, uh, some spreadsheet course with a local council. Trying. Well, Mac's, Mac's are with it, without doubt the the ultimate for for design and and possibly for music. I use PCs, but um, definitely definitely the. Uh, the ultimates, aren't they, in terms of design? Well, my what? daughter and my, my son have both got laptop PC type things, and I've got a. Uh, unfortunately, my Mac, my my good Mac is a bit. Is a bit. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, picks it up on your Facebook page. Yeah. Currently using my one. I use the emails, which is very, you can't even load a Facebook page, so oh, it's a nightmare. Nightmare. Well, it's like losing your left hand, isn't it? So what happened? Hey. What happened after um, Atletico Spiz What what was the, well, the next thing change? Uh, we had a, we had a, Mark and Dave left the band, uh, and we got um, Lou from the Damned in. All right. And he recorded the album, the second album of this. And then of course Atletico, the Olympics were over. Uh, the, the band had changed again, so we thought let's call ourselves something else. So um, it was more our manager who thought he was a big Beatles fan. Yeah. He thought we should call the Spizzles, you see. The what, sorry? Spizzles. Which isn't really the most popular name that we used. But um, What's right, obviously I was just thinking, oh yeah, we're going to be big as the Beatles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's he called? The sp the sp what did he call them? The Spizzles? Spizzles. Sp oh, dear just me. The Spizzles. That's dreadful, isn't it? It was, it's dreadful, really. It's a bit too. It, it was taking us in the wrong direction. Oh, absolutely. And it, what happened? We did the uh, American tour. We, everything fell apart anyway. So then we regrouped with the original drummer from Soldier Soldier West, Captain Kirk. He rejoined us. We did a couple of singles with Rough Trade as Spiz Energy Two, trying to like a, like a sequel back to the back yeah. to the same back, almost the same lineup. The Pete Petrol coming back in, another guitarist instead of a keyboard player. And um, and Jim on bass, and that was the um, Spitzenich too. We did a couple of big gigs, but the um, the whole uh, there was just a lot of you know what a lot of bands go through after a couple of years. You know some some mem band members you like, some you don't. You know. Yeah, well, it's difficult being on the road, isn't it? Whatever. You're in each other's pockets all the time, aren't you? It's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, in some ways that's 
make friends forever, which, you know, me and Jim and Dave Scott and Pete Petrel are all on pretty pretty good speaking terms. Uh, good. I, I still play with Pete. Pete. Pete comes over from New Zealand and we do a couple of his all shows. Oh, which is another brilliant thing about the name changes now. I can, I can just pop into each genre. <laughs> so if it's me and Pete and we get Alan Wave in, the original first Spiz Energy drummer, mm. he comes in and so now we're like Spiz Hall is a trio with, with Alan, me and Pete and we do um, a mixture of all the oldie stuff plus a couple of the more current stuff. And we got, but we, we, you only get 6,000 crazy and four as Spiz Oil. Oh, okay. So I, 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 do, I only do it as an intro with Spiz Energy and then we go into, because we've got a full band and it's a bit of a difficult song to play as a full band. So. Right. Right. And, and is that the, the end of the name changes? No, no, I just kept going, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so I, you, you know, I said, you do? And then, so then I, as I say, everything fell apart. So I went solo with some backing tracks, which uh, uh, Ian Page from Secret Affair helped me with his oh, yeah, the like that. studio uh, and, and the keyboard. And so did some backing tracks. Uh, and we got called, I thought, well, it's a year before 1984, mm, 1983, Spizz Spiz what? It's definite silence. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it, sorry. Spiz. Spiz Orwell. Oh, well. As in... 94, yeah. The year before night. I wanted to be a step ahead of everyone. So, <laughs> I, like, like a fool, I was too ahead. Well, well that's it, ahead. yeah. Head, head of the game and, and people miss it, yeah. Yeah, so when everyone else has gone to see the film 1984, it was actually... It was now 1984 and I'd changed my name again because I thought it hadn't worked, so... I uh, know, I was going to call myself Spiz and the Astronauties because I had an uh, all-girl backing group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was fun, wasn't it? And what, uh, what year was that? That's 1984. Dear me. I mean, that's but quite... I also called it... We did a big show at the, the Marquee Club and I called it The Last Future Show. Being mm. like... 1984, the end of everything and all that sort of stuff. Absolutely, and then, yeah. uh, It was going to be a club act, so we... We, we thought, well, let's, let's do some clubs. And, and I thought, this is, the, the, the couple of the girls thought were quite ambitious. And they said, this could really, this could really take off. So I, th I thought, yeah, it's time for a name change then. Uh, so I called it uh, Spizzy's Big Business. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. That was one of my favourite scenes from, uh, <laughs> it's a Laurel and Hardy film, yeah. where they set up shop and uh, the next, they, they have a rival next door and they start smashing each other's shops up. But one of the signs that's, you know, uh, Oliver Hardy puts in the window is open for big business. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, it just tickles me that phrase. Not, you're not just open for business, you're open for big business. <laughs> and, did, and did you copyright all these names? I, they, they, well, it, what's, what's the point? Because they're moving so quick, yeah. There's certain names I'm not going to go back to, you know. No, no. And, and so what happened after Spizz's big business? Well, the back in track things was was too uh, restrictive for my particular way of performing. So uh, through another girlfriend, uh, 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 Claire King, uh, she introduced me to this other band who um, the singer was going to take a, a sabbatical because he was just getting married. He was going to leave the band for a year. And so they said, well, we'll be your backing band for a year. And uh, they were called Friends of Gavin. And then they became rebranded as Spizz Sexual. <laughs> Take me. How do you keep because, track you know, of all this? A of raunchy, raunchy dancers on stage with us. <laughs> we're playing like pretty hard rock, punk rock. Dear me. That'd and, be, that'd uh, be we good stuff. We started finishing in the, uh, the, the Marquee Club a couple of times and we did a few good shows. Have you got any, then, any yeah, footage of all these? Of, hey? of, have you got any footage of all this? Uh, of, There's of some these footage uh, of the uh, Speed Sexual, yeah. We had a couple of cameras up, got some songs on, um, on the. Um, on, they were on YouTube. I might have said one again. Yeah, because be you've got them. you've got your own YouTube channel, haven't you? I have got some stuff on there. Yeah. Uh, and what's that but, called? Uh, but, but it's all on. Um, it's all done on early early video to video to digital conversions. So it's all a bit low grade. But yeah, it's yeah. A, <laughs> heaps of blurring as they get older, and things. So. But it's a, it's a great piece of history, isn't it? So what's your, what's well, I'll try, when I get uh, my machine back up, I'll try and re redo them a bit and uh, see if we can get them up. No, that'd be great. I'll send them to you. <laughs> oh, abs absolutely. I'd love to see them and I'd love to, to publish them through uh, through your site. What's what's your site called? Your YouTube channel? Uh, it's Biz Energy, D-O-T, as in dot, yeah. com. Yeah, pretty sure. Okay. 
Well, I'll put a, um, I'll put a copy of that up on the uh, on the video with the the image of it, so that that'll be great. And is that the end of the the name changes? No. Or does it go no. on? <laughs> <laughs> so right, right up to. Uh, I knew the answer to that was going to be no. Like everything by having all the uh, different name changes. So that's 85, 86, 87, uh, I, I met up with Jim again, uh, who'd started a little record label, and Nicky Tesco, the members, wanted yeah. to do a sort of a, a dance remix, re-record rather, of Where's Captain Kirk, with a bit of uh, Soviet Mind Walk slow, slung in for good measure. And we did a, a dance 12-inch mix of Where's Captain Kirk. And we just put that out straight forward as Spiz, you know, no, no mess in there, just Spiz solo with the production team. Uh, and it was all right. Uh, it got to number one in the uh, Viz chart. Brilliant. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the only chart where money talks. You can absolutely openly uh, corrupt you. You just pay for the, the most money that week, that month gets gets you in the top of the uh, the Viz chart. <laughs> and that was the remix. That sounds interesting. And that was the remix, yeah. Is that is that still available? Reissue rather. Yeah, I've got some couple of copies here. <laughs> Have you got that? I mean, yeah. We're, I think it's on the first. It's uh, it's on the first uh, cherry red compilation. Is it? Which is out of print, but I've got a couple of copies there. Uh, <laughs> Should digitise it. Um, what else happened? Uh, say eighty, eighty eight, uh, eighty nine, eighty eight. Um, it's our Spiz Orbit, Spiz Orbit eighty eight, which was uh, some re re uh, a band formed with uh, Lol Hammond and a couple of his mates who were in a band called. Kiss that, and Ian Page came in on the uh, keyboards. So we did a couple of shows. So we did a, we did a fashion, um, uh, quite uh, uh, Kensington Market uh, Christmas party or something at the Limelight in in 1988. And in 1989, I met these guys through uh, an old friend, Andy Blade of Eta, and he introduced me to these like quite metally geezers, and. Um, I need to call it Spiz Metal, but I, I wanted to call it Spiz Division. And that was another name, that's 89. Then we got to 90, which me and Pete Petrol uh, and me, we thought, let's go techno, and became a sort of a techno Spiz Oil with a, another chap from South London doing all the programming. And um, uh, so the, 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 name, the name evolved, the, eh? the name evolved, and the sound evolved. We with kept, the time. I mean, I was, was looking for something. Different. I mean, you know, the chameleon, you know. Absolutely. But, um, without, the, without the budget, it, the, all, these things, if they didn't take off straight away, I had to just move on, really. Yeah, yeah. So then we up to 91, where my my missus met, had, had a couple of uh, sales blokes, and with my drummer from the metal band, uh, and the new bassist and new guitarist, we, uh, we did some shows from 91 to 96 as Spiz Energy. That was it, I'd finished with the name changes because uh, someone suggested I write some of the, the records and say, <laughs> uh, you probably are the only guy who's re recorded the most number of different songs under different names. Absolutely. And you should be in the Gibbs for Records. So I, I just toddled off a letter saying, by the way, I've done this, I've done that. And then they said, they got a letter back from the deputy editor, Sheila Thomas, <laughs> and she said, uh, I'm afraid uh, your, your claim to a record is a bit too specialist. You're kidding me. And I often remind people, a specialist? Someone, someone's been it's in the Guinness Book of Records for sawing up a mug and eating it. Absolutely. And they're in the Guinness Book of Records. How more specialist can you get? Absolutely. <laughs> well, so, some, some of the rubbish that you get in there, the ridiculous things that people get records for. Way. Yes, by the way, I bought Where's Captain Kirk? Oh, there must be a shoe in! Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, this it. If the Guinness Book of Record, I'm going to recognise my name changes or anything, so I, I just thought I don't need to do that. But I do. I've still done it because I did a, a single release for Damaged Goods Christmas Flexi Disc called uh, Spismus, as Spismus. <laughs> it was, uh, and that came out um, in 94, I think that was. And then I did. Um, uh, I've, I've got the Italian band, so that's got its own name, Spiz Italia. Uh, and then I've got, um, uh, yeah, but Spiz Energy is the thing that most people know, so I'm sticking with it now. So I'm how still, you know, I still have fun. 
Absolutely, and I think um, you know most marketing managers would say, um, "What the hell's going on, Spiz?" Most people would like to build a brand, keep the name the same, and you've had so many name changes, interesting name changes. What what do you say to those people? Well, um, well, t several things really. Well, the whole thing about punk was about change. Absolutely, blow blow the old away. Yeah, and not being stuck in your ways. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, why not? Absolutely. And Absolutely. Frank Seibert told me, when people say, why do you keep changing your name? Just say, your mother told you to. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You've been a very naughty boy. <laughs> you just say, your mother told you to. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, well, you know. It's, a, it's not been commercial suicide, has it? Uh, it's, well, the thing is now, with the, with the internet and social networking, I can now brand any particular event to the, the name I fancy. Absolutely. And how, how refreshing is that? You know what I mean? How, how, why, why can't you do it? Well, it makes, it, it makes you, an, you know, a real person of interest, a, a, an artist of interest. Your CV, if he actually types all this up, your CV must be about four pages long, mustn't it? This is why I can't get a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> page three, the page, page four, you know. It's supposed to be a one or two pages. Yeah. Dear me. So um, we've got loads to talk about over the, the coming weeks, but um, and this has just been a taster. What's what's coming up? I know you've got some exciting things coming up uh, in the next week or two. Um, I've got the, uh, the beginning of June. I'm off to Milan to play with Spitz Italia for oh. fourth, the fourth fourth Spitz Italia gig in in Milan. Um, my, I've got some guys there who who learn who learn all my stuff, and uh, we've we actually written one, which is. Presumably, we're going to play again. We only played it once, and that's on June the first. In then on June the sixth, um, one of my my new guitarists, because I changed uh, the lineup uh, in October this year, last year, 2012, and uh, there, there's a, a Bowie, some kind of Bowie night with uh, I think Charles Murray is doing some talking, and uh, there's going to be some screenings of stuff, and a few people are doing. Bowie songs and we're going to do a couple of Bowie songs uh, oh, sort of fantastic. like acoustically fantastic which ones have you chosen? Uh, I'm not sure it's supposed to be a surprise okay say no more <laughs> say no more <laughs> he looks I cool your new guitarist on, with I've his... already said it on Facebook I think it's um, uh, well we're going to do Rebel Rebel and Lady Grinning Soul brilliant which is not a song David does anymore I don't think that'd be fantastic and how to, can people still buy tickets for these shows? I think it's uh, free, the uh, Bowie one. Right. Could that I be don't know about the Italian stuff until I get there. <laughs> That'll be and then I've got uh, Bristol in... Hang on, where's my diary? <laughs> my war planner. Uh, sept September is... Somewhere. I haven't got my glasses on. Hang on. Uh, anyway, we've got, uh, we've got Bristol coming up and uh, Germany in October. And, uh, Bristol's in November. We've got Scotland in September. Fantastic. Scotland in September. Fantastic. Well, we'll talk about those again. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, great, great, great talk to you this morning, Spiz. And um, we'll see you on the net and uh, around the world. Hi. All the best to you. Thank you. Cheers, Spiz. Bye.